Um, Bartel has been one of the persons who's watched all the shows. Um, I talk to him on a regular basis in the um, EverQuest Next IRC channel. What we saw with, uh, you know, Kunark for, for EQ2, you did those 400 quests, you did all the content, and at the end of it, the world wasn't changed. Yeah, I'm Phantom X. I uh, do social media and uh, write articles for EQ Nexus. For the fall of Baskin, um, there was a very definite. Okay, this is this is where your story is going to fit into the, the world. Listen, fluffy looking bear. Thank you. Listen, <laughs> um, I went and I killed a dragon, and then two drops of whiskey hit my face, and I willed this manly beard into. <laughs> <laughs> Cow was raising yes. Hey, well, hello! Welcome, welcome to, to uh, uh, Evercast. <laughs> Wait, what? What did you say? Wait, what? Welcome to Evercast. I, I'm, I'm hearing all sorts of weird things. Somebody had their feedback. Welcome to Ever Kick Ass Cast. Is that what Hell I, I think yeah, that's yeah, what I yeah, need yeah, to hear? Yeah. Welcome to Evercast Kick Ass Cast. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, well, fantastic. We're all back. Um, Cool episode planned for us tonight, titled Making Money. Who doesn't like a little moolah in their pocket? Um, money, money, money. Money, money, talks. Um, I think we're going to kick it off with the ECAS news, though, right? Yes, kicking it off with the ECAS news. Hi, everybody. Um, so, the first thing we're going to do for our ECAS news is talk about our featured build. We're going to turn it over to uh, Calvor on a video, and he's going to go through that feature for us. Hello everyone, welcome to our new segment of the Evercast show called Featured Builds, where we will be featuring builds submitted by you, the community. Today we will take a closer look at the build called Deep Sand Oasis, created by Heather. If you want to submit builds for future features, email them to this email address, evercast.show.gmail.com, with a screenshot of your build, the map, and mentioning your server and island name. Any background information or other uh, info on the build is always appreciated as well. We hope to feature a build every show, and depending on interest, we might do so on a weekly basis. If you already submitted your build, there's no need to do so again. We will use the same pool until we run out of submissions. And now, without further ado, let's take a look at this week's build.
and that were some of the highlights of this amazing build. There are two things that I really loved about featuring this build. One is the fact that having only one claim size at the time didn't stop him from building a small uh, town. And second is the fact that it kind of represents the tiers of content that we'll eventually see procedurally generated in the game. Uh, this was only one claim, and after the last patch, Heather is already expanding his claim. Uh, so to be sure, so be sure to follow him on Twitter or go check out the claim for yourself in game. That was our build for this week. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Hey, check out that build. Um, oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I want to thank. Um, I think it's Toronto Tiggs um, is the the author and he or the creator, and he is actually in the Twitch channel as well. So a shout out to him. Um, wow, that was pretty impressive. Um, if you, yeah. if you have other claims um, or if you've created your own claim and would like us to feature it again, um, email it to us and we'll get it um, so that the uh, community can take a look at it. <laughs> Do you mind if I jump in? I just wanted to ask Call, what was your favorite part of that build? Um, if you had to pick the, one thing from that build, I, what, what's the best? I kind of already said so in the video, but like the, the, the thing that really makes this build, in my opinion, is the fact that you kind of really see the tiers of content a little bit already, where you have the town, to sewers, to catacombs, to caverns, which is kind of how I imagine it will go in Landmark when stuff gets procedurally generated as well. So that's the like the aspect that I really like. I, I love seeing builds like that, like when everyone's featured on a site or anything, and the whole, the whole kind of town builds. Yeah, it's cool to see like sort of one building, but I really love when people sort of build more than that. You know, they they try to capture the city, or they have a temple that leads to an underground. You know, something that gives me a Absolutely. lot to explore. Yeah, fantastic. I can't wait to see what happens now that we have uh, two plots to work with, right? Three. Three plots to Three. work with. Three plots, you're right, you're right. Two, oh my two, God. Two, two extra. Space. Wow, that's fantastic. Very yeah. cool. Um, so the next bit of eCast news um, is the reason why we're a little bit late is that we got all new um, audio equipment, and I'm going to show off some of it uh, so that people can see. The first thing is that I got a new professional microphone. Um, this should prevent me from ever pulling a Tanlin again because it shouldn't <laughs> pull, up, <laughs> it shouldn't pull up Kyles sitting in the, over in the other room. It, it what are we going to drink on, Tanlin? Uh, we'll have to find yeah, something, we need something else. else to drink on. <laughs> we'll have to find something else. Every time Chad rambles on. <laughs> <laughs> right. huh. I, um, I might ramble on, but it's always in good heart. All right. <laughs> so the next bit um, that I wanted to show off, I'm going to steal the, the center for a moment forgive the camera um say hello to the rest of our house <laughs> anyway you probably couldn't see it very well but it's a new um audio mixer so it's a new audio mixer and a new um, microphone and we plug those both in and those should really help out with um blocking out the background sound so that you don't hear kylas when she's talking um, and then, oh, last thing, we upgraded our, our internet router, not really audio equipment, but I thought it was funny because, you know, this router, the one that I replaced, it, it's only 10 years old. These things last forever, right? <laughs> so, so, hopefully, so hopefully the, only 10 years old, only 10 years old, but hopefully like some of the lag and, and issues that we've had on the show, they, all of that stuff should go away. Um, so the, that is it for the, um, for that that portion of the ecast news moving on well more. didn't we promise a website by this week yeah can we just say that's <laughs> oh! coming or because i'm pretty sure that was part of the last ecast news i don't want to call you guys out yes, on your yes, promise yes, or anything yes. nice way of putting me on the spot there Jack. totally putting you on the spot i don't know <laughs> um yes um it's going <laughs> that's, that's coming guys that's, that's the it's best coming. answer we're gonna pull like, an SOE I, I, soon. I, I think we featured it three or four times in our news now. Um, the layout is done. Uh, background coding still has quite a bit of work because I want to do some things with it in the future, maybe. So, Man, we've been promising that thing for like what? Five which I'm not really now. gonna talk about yet. But yeah, we'll keep it uh, secret. Yeah, we're good. Cool. That's all I'm gonna guys. say. So soon. soon. All right.
Uh, the next bit of Evercast uh, eCast news, um, if you haven't noticed, Athletis is out today. Um, he was feeling a little bit sick earlier today. Um, but you can always still continue to show your support for him and the show. Come on, tweet out and hashtag Flattis Helsink Army. Let him know that you're thinking about him. Uh, then last thing, the status on our Facebook and Twitter likes. Um, again, if you're reading the ticker below, if you've heard us talk about it on the show before, uh, once we get to a thousand, um, we're planning on doing a giveaway. So, um, tell your friends, tell, uh, people you run in, hey, eCast show or the Evercast show, eCast news. Uh, we're really was- close. We're less than 50 <laughs> away from that. And we have some cool, uh, prizes that we're working on for the right. contest. It should be really awesome. So, you guys can just help us get that little last push to a thousand. Um, you know, sort of an arbitrary milestone, but we'd love to hit it. And we can, uh, we'll thank you forever and ever and ever if you help us get there. Right. So, yeah. That- That'll do it for the eCast News. Um, the next segment that we had all planned out, and this kind of goes up with the eCast News, it's called What's Up? Hey, Trayden. What, what's, 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 what's up? up? <laughs> what's up? Um, well, what's up appara- with what? Apparently, I have horns. It's been pointed out in stream that Angela has horns today. I would, like, I would like to say that no, I do not have horns. I have a pirate flag. And oh, yar. Yes, we've seen her backstage. She is sadly she hides them well. the way I was sitting. I didn't. <laughs> that was payback for the rambling on. Oh, <laughs> shot, shots fired! Shots fired! Um, oh, shots yeah. fired. I missed it. He's probably lucky that I. Oh no! It was not that. It was not that. How about we take shots whenever there are shots fired? Okay. There we go. There <laughs> From we go. Now on. All right. Shots fired. <laughs> um, so who's leading this? What's up? Um, anybody. I, what are you doing? What, what have you been up to? I know, Chad, you're super okay. busy. Um, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I haven't I, had much time to play Landmark. I did I get on, though, after the update. I did. I saw that because you had been working on a claim, and then you tweeted out yeah. a picture of the house that you were working on. It looks like you got rid of your gnome. or your. I did. Yeah, I kind of gave up for a while because um, gears are very difficult, especially when working on a mountain. So I wanted gears to like go through the mountain and things like that. And I just kind of gave up for now, um, but that was before the new smoothing tool, so I think that might uh, make it a little easier. But yeah, I'm working on a nice little, uh, it's it's sort of going to be like dark elfish home. There's not a single corner inside, so it, it might be square on the outside, but it's all curved walls and things like that. It should turn out really cool. Other than that, um, you know, senior research going down, we're, uh, I'm doing a study on planet side too in virtual communities right now, and data collection's begun, so that's probably why I haven't heard too much of me. I've been uh, sitting in the hovels. But um, I'm very excited for these next couple months. Hopefully I'll get some more time to play. Until then, we'll just keep on with the discussion. How about you guys? Okay, so me, me next, me next. Um, oh, just she's, because she's, she's excited. excited. I'm super excited. Um, so on the last episode, I complained. <laughs> rather loudly as normal that um i was unable to play landmark because there were some serious issues um and it wasn't my computer and after um i mentioned it dave was really nice and he emailed back and forth with me um for several days trying to help me fix the problem and he he very clearly stated it wasn't my machine and it wasn't my internet so we couldn't figure out what it was that was making it to where I couldn't play. But lo and behold, the, the the most recent update, and now I can log in and I can actually play. Oh my God, I can finally play the game. I'm so excited. Good for you. Fantastic. But I seriously Good. found out today, and since I found out today, it's like, I don't have the time to play. I have Evercast to do today. So I've been planning the show all day instead of getting to, to um, Instead of getting to, to play, I've been planning the show. But that's okay. That's okay. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And enjoy. Uh, the, you're going to love the new biomes. They're absolutely beautiful. Like, I, that is one thing I can comment on. Even so, though I'm still waiting on my high def textures on some things, you know, they're gorgeous. Like, some, some beautiful biomes. Really nice. Makes sense. Uh, what's up with you, Tamlin? You kind of uh, told us a little bit, but. No, I, I got frustrated with my claim a little bit too, but it wasn't because of the game itself. It's that, um, you know, I, I'm married to another gamer and we are. What? <laughs> so <laughs> don't tell my wife. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, Wait, another gamer? You and, have um, two? 
we're we're looking we're wait or at least me i am waiting to go full into what we can build to when we get to the point in the game in the alpha where they add in where i can say like hey honey you can do whatever you want do whatever you want on my claim and we can work on each other's claims together and so i kind of got frustrated working it on my own because i you know this is kind of like a team building thing for us uh, team building it's a, it's a team project for us it's something that we like to marriage do counseling <laughs> Right. And so it, it will um, be but, after the other wife. Is however, I however, I did get into the game earlier today to see the new biomes because, you know, I wanted to, to see the biomes before I came on the show and I grabbed my three biomes and I'm loving it. Um, I, I, um, I can't wait to, to start building on it. I already started building up on my next project. I think it's going to look a ton better than my last one. Yeah, fantastic. And what's up with you, Cotton? What's up, Doc? And you want me to get that reference? I hope You're so. too yeah, young for yeah, that no, show. I get that reference. I am not too young for anything. <laughs> guy in the bath. That's... Yeah, well, um, all right. really bad. Been... Last week was really relaxed. Lots of streaming, lots of building. This week I've been like kind of swamped. Um, tomorrow I'm going to stream for the first time in a week, which is really uncommon for me. Um, I have did manage to pop on after the patch, quickly relocate my claim. We kind of moved with like, I think about 10 friends to another island and we, I oh, think nice. we cornered off like most of every available space around the spire. So as soon as permissions and like allowing people to build on your claim or attach your claims to them uh, comes live, we can pretty much corner off to almost the entire island. So uh, we have some cool things planned for that. Fantastic. Man, I can't wait to see themed uh, islands and builds like that. Oh, Imagine no. once communities start relocating like that, find people with like interest, go on a new island, put your plots together, have like four little plots there. You're going to be able to build all kinds of stuff. Imagine like right, a right. Star and, Wars island. And that was one of the things I wanted to talk about. The, cl the, the claim space that I grabbed, I grabbed the top of a mountain, um, but somebody already had the bottom part of the mountain going into the bottom, and I want to get a hold of them and be like, dude, we need to connect our claims somehow, if you're okay with it, because that would be the coolest thing in the world. The top, you know, go into the bottom of the fortress and then come up to the top. Um, Heck yeah. He really does call me dude sometimes. It's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and that actually uh, leads in right into, great segue, into our next little topic. And that's just going to be the coolest build that we've seen so far. Super quick and easy. Um, Not it's been tweeted out. Wants. Mine is a, um, you know, it's kind of like a crafter's corner. I, I don't have the details off the top of my head, and I do apologize. Um, but he kind of built this modernized, it, it almost looks like, you imagine, um, like what goblin architecture looks like outside of, um, like, Warhammer series. And then you take that and you modernize it a little bit. And he built it. It's basically like a crafting corner, and it just has all these really cool angles and, and like upside down pyramids. It, it's really cool. Um, I'll try and tweet it out a little later tonight. But that's the coolest thing I've seen so far. But I don't explore much because I get really tired and bored exploring emptiness to find one cool thing. But that's me, just right now. Yeah, and I'm gonna say that I have not done a whole lot of exploration, and I found my favorite thing. I mean, I think that everybody's seen it at this point in time. It's uh, the giant statue of the woman. I'm just going to bring it up really quick um, because it takes, you know, you just l one look at it and you're like, wow, how did they do that? Um, maybe in a, you know, in a decade worth of practice and crafting my artistic skill, I'll get to that point. So, um, Kyles, Cal, one of you two want to go next? What you've you, used? You next? I'll go next. Um... So, unfortunately, I haven't gotten to see a whole lot of the game because there were some problems with me playing. Um, and I'm trying really, really hard to remember the name of the server that it was on, and I'm really sorry. I'll, I'll try to remember and say later. Um, somebody built a Steve from Minecraft at a crafting station. And no, it wasn't, like, the best thing ever, like... It was just really freaking cool to see it. So for me, it was really awesome because it was totally recognizable and to see it done was just kind of neat. Um, and it was really easy to spot from forever and ever and ever. So it, it was like, that's where my crafting hub is. I can go over there and I can craft. And that was really cool to me. Cool. And um, yeah, I... I promise to not take screenshots yet, 
but it's an amazing build that a friend of mine is building. It's basically a huge uh, gothic style cathedral, like lots of rooftops and wow. Uh, it's 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 amazing. Every every time I walk to my plot, I'm like, damn. <laughs> but uh, builder envy a little bit. Other than that, uh, like minutes before the show, uh, Tanlin. Um, We'll put it on the screen, I think. I think he already showed it on the screen briefly. Yeah, I teased it. Yeah. I teased it and then you were talking about something <laughs> else and I'm like, oh, and that... I said something else. Yeah, I know. It's totally my fault. <laughs> um, this statue got like sent to our Twitch uh, inbox on the Evercast account a moment ago and that kind of blew my mind. So, like, I want to feature that as well. Cause... That is... Yeah. Giant frogs. Hopefully one day. Oh, those are awesome. Race, Giant please. frog locks. Nice. Yeah, this is one of those builds where you expect to see like a village of frog locks like all formed around, um, you know, around the base of this huge statue that they've erected to some warrior of theirs. And um, I also want to shout out the uh, Twitch user that created this, which is Froak. And he did an amazing job so far. Great job. I I think that's the uh, the coolest build that we've all gone over. Uh, the next little thing that we're going to touch on is the latest build. Um, obviously, there's the two new biomes um, that are connected, um, which is the the Arctic tundra and the old growth uh, wild forest. Um, have you all of us have had a chance to to take a look at it? Right? Have you? What do you think of the? Yes. What do you think of the faces in the trees that they've put in there? I, I love it. I really, really enjoy it. I think they're really I, pretty. They're cool. I don't think they're too obvious to where it's like, oh, that's a smiley face sort of thing. Um, <laughs> but Call does, apparently. But it gives a character. And it, for me, it creates a nice fantasy setting because that's where I'm building my, my elvish house. And, you know, when I picture an old kind of growth forest, I picture, you know, maybe trance or something like that. Or just, like, maybe carvings of faces and trees. I think it provides a good setting for people who want a fantasy setting. That's why I like it. Plus, it's pretty. Yeah. Um, Would you not agree with that call? Or? I, I agree. Um, I have to admit, though, the first time I uh, loaded into the, 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 the new grassy area, uh, my first impression was, well, this is just more of the same until I took took a closer look at all the new trees and plants and such. Uh, yeah. And what I really love is there's so much more flat lands in these these biomes, which which was a huge issue, especially if you only have one claim. Merging or like morphing your uh, your build in a one claim area and then still taking into account the surroundings and making it it fit is quite a feat. Although now with three, that's not really an issue anymore because you have much more space. I do have to say three is such an odd number to build in, though. I I, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to ask for more, but four would like kind of make more sense in that regard. I will have but, to say uh, yeah. that, that the addition of the flatlands, like my first build, it was entirely on flat desert. And then the new claim that I've been working on is at the top of a mountain and I have like almost no flat space to work on and I never appreciated how how much you really needed that flat space to, to, to build it's on. Difficult. That's part of why I abandoned my build because I was trying to build an entire kind of gnomish workshop inside of a, the top of a mountain. So I had a grappling hook just to get up there basically. And, and just working within the mountain and trying to create flat space out of something that was completely vertical, like we're talking like this, it, it was just so difficult, I gave up. I said, hey, I'll save that for a time where I'm a more experienced builder. So, there's one more thing, though. Has anyone built any snowmen yet? No, I, I didn't have time. I needed to... But do you want to build a snowman? Yeah, that's... <laughs> that's the chat. Come on. Are we going to sing today, or are we going to sing? Do, 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 do. No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I won't make you do that. Slightly, slightly <laughs> off topic. Slightly off Coward. topic. But did you see the uh, that there was a parody song? Do uh, you uh, want to get a beer, man? <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh my God, no, no, I haven't seen that at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, it's great. Just do a quick Google search. Do you want to grab a, a Do you want to grab a beer, man? Parody. I mean, I, I mean, I've never seen Frozen more than like a dozen times or anything. So yeah, like, you know. yeah. Yeah, Frozen, fantastic. No, I, but anyways, I, I'm a Disney fan. Disney file, I should say. Um, go ahead, Taylor. Creep. 
<laughs> so um, this was coming on from Twitter, so I didn't have a chance to verify it. But was there any changes done to like a uh, social interaction or a friends list or anything? No. Well, uh, yes and no. Um, there was a workaround. Well, um, <laughs> don't. A not really correct way to add friends at the moment, and I had some friends pending, and I'm not really sure, sure how they did it. But because I stream, I had some friend requests pending, and I could now click those away or accept them. But oh, wow. there's no real interface for them yet. Okay. So there's Hopefully work soon. going on, and I'm not sure if it was intended to go into the patch or not, but I now got a pop-up with yes or no. I Ooh. think that's pretty much the only thing that, that I know of that got added. But again, yeah, I didn't spend like hours. You guys are forgetting one huge thing, though. What's that? This patch. Smoothing tool, new smoothing tool. What do you think? I... I haven't played around with it a lot. I I this just is, uh, I, I just got into learning how to use the the what did they call it? Uh oh. I'm gonna keep going. As yeah, that's two X's. First, you haven't like you don't you didn't, haven't used the smooth tool, and then you don't remember what you're talking about. Call, just go ahead. All right, go ahead. Save us from this mess. <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. Well, here, here's the thing. Like, this is this is part of a downside of like playing in alpha. I guess is. You master the tools, they improve the tools, and you lose part of your initial functionality at times. Now, the, with the smoothing tool, I don't have that issue that much because we can still make micro voxels, even though they take a little bit more, more work to do. But I really love the extra freedom of actually being able to completely remove uh, voxels. It yeah. wasn't, it didn't really meet my expectations. I was expecting more, but I cannot, at the same time, I cannot really t tell you what it cannot do at the moment that I was expecting it to do. So maybe it was just hyped up in a way that I was like, okay, now I can do a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like, okay. I'm still smoothing, of course. I, I, okay. I guess in, in a degree, um, I, I do not think it represents sandpaper at the moment. Not in the way where I'm like, okay, I want to cut off this corner of this voxel a little bit and I just do it that way. That's, that, that's definitely not the case, but I also do not think that was that, that was feasible to begin with. Um, other than that, I've, yeah, I can, I can definitely live with this implementation. I really, I really like it um, for one thing, and that is before when you use the smooth tool and you didn't use the selection volume and you were just trying to smooth away, um, it would often warp way too much around it. Now, the way it stretches and deletes voxels, I can go in and find an imperfect face on something and just kind of smooth over it. And that's why the sandpaper, why I think it's like sandpaper. Selection volume wise, I, I haven't seen too much difference except that it deletes the actual voxels too fast. So I'm finding myself if I want to build like um, a rounded platform, I have to build it like even bigger or thicker because it'll, it seems to delete more than it does smooth. Um, but other than that, I really like it so far. Just got to figure out how to play with it. Have, have you guys messed around with the multiple claims yet? Um, because I'm yes. still, I'm still seeing a little bit of an issue when I'm working on the border between my two attached claims. Like it does not like it working in that space. Um, and that's where this is where I see the issue when I'm on one side of, of a claim border and I'm trying to work on just the, on the other side of it, but it's actually in the other one, but they're both my, my claim. It does not like that. Not, I, I mean, I want to record video of it so that I can, I can show the developers like what I'm seeing. Interesting. Yeah. I'm sure it's a bug. Uh, <laughs> I'm probably sure it's a bug. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's, there, there's one thing that uh, was really huge for me this patch, which is that con, uh, undoing changes uh, with especially microvoxels are a lot more predictable. They're not perfect yet, but it doesn't screw up as much as it used to, um, which is good and bad because uh, last week I was kind of abusing it to make shapes in the ground without having to actually like um, make indentations, I guess, but uh, that's good most of the time. Oh yeah, for sure. And I mean, there's a lot of other stuff that was added in the patch. Um, things like plants, you can now craft plants and, and you know, a lot of assets were added. Which look well. awesome, by the way. Like, what <laughs> people have been building with that, like, I really love, like, and, and this is going to be a thing that gets implemented more and more. As we get more props, People are going to find out more ingenious ways to use props or part of props or like the bottom side of a plant for something or like what would what, what I, for example, really want is I want the chains of lamps, but I don't want the lamps. So, yeah. 
I'm, yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, you can imagine the kind of things that people are doing in voxels, um, and and we we touched on the subject a while ago. Um, but you know, EverQuest too. Look, that's all props, and Rift, that's all props. You know, that people are able to create amazing things with those props, and you know, typically the textures are higher quality. They have unique shapes to them. Um, so combine, you know, the creative capacity of the voxel with a huge library of props for people to play around, morph, you know, turn. We have great freeform movement on props to be able to stretch them and do what we want with them. Um, I think we're going to see some fantastic stuff. I was thinking of the frog lock statue, you know. Yeah, that's a great sculpture, but you can't really add detail after that. Not not very well if you want it like a high quality texture. So you could outfit it with props over time and really make it something cool. Yeah, um, I think that was one of the kind of the exciting things I, I learned from in the live stream was not only were they patching in a whole bunch of props, but they're like, if there's if, if we missed one, if we miss something that you see in the world and it's not something that you create, let us know because they want us building with all of the different props that they've, you know, that they have access to. They want us to have access to those, you know, all of the tools that they have, they want us to have. Thank you. Is there anything else that we really wanted to talk about with this patch? I, I mean, I know it hasn't been out that long. No, it's it's only been out for a couple of days now. Yeah. But I got snow. Oh my god, oh my it works on my computer. Holy crap, I'm so excited. <laughs> but when are we going to have falling snow? That's what I want to know. Oh, the, the weather. weather. Ray! It, just give me some dang particle effects. I don't like, It doesn't have to be voxel snow, but come on, give me some. I want, I want it like no, I a, want, you, I want, you get up on that mountain and the wind the ground, comes through. Generates voxels, and then like I can scoop my hand through it, and then I get like... Okay, maybe a little bit too far. Never mind. Yeah, and then no, I actually want a, a snow uh, like plow in the game, so I can actually rent out my services to other players and clear it out of the way off their buildings. <laughs> so we don't want anything much, really. Give me the things, all the things, all the things, me all the things, please. Well, I mean, <laughs> they're that's what I'm hearing. We want this. And yeah. We want this and we want this. And... We're picky people. We'll hold them to it. No, oh, we're not picky. We podcast with you. Oh, <laughs> shots fired! Take shots. a <laughs> Take a shot. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> well, anyways, guys, um, on to the latest developer diary. I believe um, that was put out Friday. Um, oh, we right were along with the you, you know, I love you. Well, we're gonna, <laughs> no, that was. We're gonna go, skip that. Too, you know? We're gonna we're gonna skip that and go right into the meat of the episode. What we titled it, which is making money, and that, of course, is. Our discussion over the revealed business plan, um, Dave Georgeson posted on the forums and he posted a follow up reply to the conversation that was going on about how SOE plans on making money off of Landmark because it's going to be free to play. So how do they, you know, how did, how are they going to collect their coins? How are they going to pay their rents, you know, pay for their servers? Um, it did, did Which it is something we talk out? a lot about. Right. You know, did, we, we've had very high standards about this too. Like everything was else. there was there any surprises in their in their business plan? Let's go ahead and recap it real quick. What, okay. So what exactly are the phases that they they talk about implementing? Uh, phase one is to let. Um, hold on, I was it's looking. It's probably easiest if you let the, me uh, recap it, then, considering I actually like have it here. <laughs> I yeah, okay. here it too. Phase I one is the phase Hi. we're currently in, which are the founder packs and later settler packs. Um, so basically buying your way into the, the testing phase of the game. Phase two is they start selling uh, things like resources. We will discuss this later. And uh, cosmetics, such as character outfits. Uh, it's important to note that there, while there is no appearance slot, you will be able to add stats and abilities to any appearance you buy. So it's kind of the other way around in that regard. Uh, phase three will move on to uh, time shortcuts, um, which uh, was an example was given, which I precisely want to quote so we don't get it wrong. Uh, let's say you have to craft a recipe in order to make a power up. Uh, power up my power pick up my potion. Pick potion. <laughs> <laughs> so you, yeah, okay, that well, that's a mouthful. <laughs> So you can get get resources more quickly. The time shortcut option would be available as a button in your collection sheet, so you could just buy that potion effect immediately instead of actually having to craft it first. Other other examples uh, from the sum up is paying for upkeep, renting market stalls, uh, which kind of confirms market stalls, which means yeah. well, renting a place where you can sell things, and uh, a short list of other convenience items. 
Um, right. It is important to note that these shortcuts will, n will not be allowed to affect game balance and can be avoided completely through in-game efforts, which I think is a really important point. Then, then they move on to phase four, which will be player studio, uh, selling templates, and it also hints at later 3D models, but they don't really want to go into that, but they have some cool, cool ideas in that regard. And it's worth pointing out that they're going to implement uh, that in the e major EU countries first as well, later hopefully moving to the smaller countries such as, say, the Netherlands and stuff. Yeah, and if you guys remember that uh, Smedley tweet, uh, one day the plan is to uh, allow us to make our own animations and sell those too. Did you see that? I don't know if it's totally going to be implemented, but Smedley a couple months ago posted that they acquired a company or were working with a company to uh, acquire a product where players could craft their own animations. Crazy stuff. Really crazy. So do I need but, uh, my own motion capture studio for that at home? I, I don't know. We'll see. Have that. Maybe we can download a little program. I don't know. So then we can dance and then we can put that in the game? I'm pretty sure they don't use mocap at Sony. And so, I'm pretty so sure they have people. a guy. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a little dance. Okay. To carry on to uh, phase five, uh, at the end of closed beta, we add more chunks of items, um, which are like cosmetic packs, sound music packs for your claims, name and gender changes, extra claim flags, and more. Um, it sounds that's like it. A, it sounds like a very reasonable like what I was expecting them to put up there. Um, you don't you don't think bloated cash cow when you think of this? No. You don't you don't. I mean, that's a, one of the biggest worries that people have going forward is that I, it's going to be I, you know monetized I, the hell out of it, and this if, doesn't seem like that to you. Yet, let's all. let's let's structure it a little bit before you like go uh, go on the tundra. Fine. Let's let's, start let's go phase by phase, right? Okay. Let's well. I think there are two major points. One is selling resources, and the other is a heavy comparison to say how certain ludicrous free-to-play games mono monetize their systems. And that is the uh, the point of ease system you're talking about in reference right there, right? No, that's the, no, because uh, that's the biggest thing for me. Well, just... like, let's start with resources. Yeah. All right, so resources, there, buying resources. The, oh, there's only one resource which I find frustrating to get. Like, none of the other resources are, are, are particularly hard. I have hard. a feeling I know what you're saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. But, yeah, but like, okay, it's worth pointing out that it was already said multiple times that resources will not impact, will, will not play a role in your progression. Yeah, they As said, they do now. basically, so it seems like the leveling curve is going to be yeah. non-existent, yeah. Right, so I... So, I I can't imagine spending money. I, I mean, and I just don't see myself paying money for resources because I find that resources are not so gr grindy. They're not grindy to get like, hey, I need a couple thousand stone or marble or whatever. I don't feel that it's particularly challenging with the amount of time that I have to play the game to just go out and get it and look for it. That, but however, the context I have to put that in is then alpha. It's not that hard because everything is near the surface and pretty easy to identify. I don't know because I haven't seen what the cave system is going to be like or how far underground I'm going to have to go to get those. So my answer is that, no, I'm probably never going to pay money for the resources unless, comma, <laughs> they put them in a, you know, unless the game changes to that point where it's like, I don't, oh, excuse me, where I need to. I should have like, made him coffee or something. Poor guy. No, but <laughs> I, I am, he has a great point, though. No, because we don't see, we don't have a lot of the gameplay elements in right now. So it, it, it could be really sort of a pay to win sort of thing. You know, maybe progression is a little easier, but if it is very difficult to get that one resource and they're selling it on the market, then it completely undercuts the player economy. Well, no, it doesn't, because like the player economy will adapt. People who who, who want mo money in the player economy will go out and harvest that. It, it, exactly. It, it depends, though. Well, no, because it depends. Because what if they set the? It, it depends on what they set their price at. If they set the price yeah, at, a, at what copper set... selling as a resource, and then you know it, it's for um, viridium or something later, cobalt. I don't know. Um, then you have a problem because then all of a sudden they're kind of saying, oh, this resource is worth this much to us, and then you guys have to adjust around us. It's not a market that's focused on the player, but it's a market of the player adapting to Sony's setting prices. Yeah, but they have already said multiple times, uh, especially when, when, when clarifying this part of selling resources, 
is that they they have no intention of making the game grindy in that regard. And here's the thing, like, and this is why I think that them selling resources is a really smart idea. Imagine me having, say, 12 claims, which is like a big square. I'm going to spend my time on my claim, build big things. I Now I already have the issue that I don't want to go out and like ha uh, farm silver and tin, which are ludicrously easy to get. But I don't want to leave my claim, ser search for those ores to craft like 12 chains that I need in order, in, 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 in order to have the uh, props to, to raise platforms. So I can totally see myself for like a, 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 a little bit of station cast getting them right now and not, and not leaving my claim. Like I, I see selling resources purely as a convenience item and if implemented correctly it will have little to no impact to the actual player, player economy and still make money for us. Right. And the, like, it's just kind of like Eve in that Eve provides like the Plex, which you buy with real cash. And then it's an in-game item. And that, that Plex is now tradable. It's a tradable commodity among the players. It's like the, those resources are also going to be like, you can harvest them up yourself and try to sell them yourself. And so there's going to be a balancing between like how much effort it is to acquire it versus how much money it's worth. And so that like, if, if the players There's... realize, if the players realize that there is a huge demand for this, a huge demand so much that people are buying it with their station cash, they're going to be like, "I'm going to go harvest it up, and I'm going to trade it with other players to build my own personal in-game wealth." Because that's something that people that appeals to certain people, and then you know you get into that that market economics type game. I I, I totally agree with that. I do want to clarify one thing though: is that like. Previously, they said that you'd be able to sell resources for real money uh, due to in, in, international tax and legal mumbo jumbo that oh, none of us probably have any clue about. Uh, that will not be a thing. So, like, it will purely be focused if that happens about in-game wealth and not like in Eve, where you can actually make some money of your of your game time as well. But either way, that's that's still a valid point. I mean, my argument isn't that it's pay to win. Of course, it's not going to be pay to win because, you know, the resources, like they said, are going to be more meaningless. You know, you're gonna be, they're going to be bountiful. Um, just the biggest thing I worry about is SOE setting prices. Um, now, I think it could be fine if they sort of release the resources and the selling to us first so they can look at market data and see what players are kind of valuing things at, and then they can sort of set the price from there. But I think there's been a long history, especially with Planetside 2, of, of items going for a certain price that are not meaningful to the players in the game and, you know, later adjusting the price to a point where, oh, those that did invest in that back then now are kind of screwed. Um, so I'd like them to be sort of proactive on this instead of retroactive when it comes to this because I think it is vital to the player community, even if resources are bountiful. There are, like you That's... said, there are people who want to buy it and they're going to want to buy it from players. Why, why don't you want to keep them buying it from players? Why do you want them to if... let them buy it from SOE right away? Just, just be careful about it is all I'm saying. Sony if, said that we could buy it from players, that it's not going to prevent players from selling. I True. mean, Chet, if, if, if that's a valid concern, then there are, there are actually easy ways around that as well. Like, look at how Guild Wars is, like, uh, benchmarking their uh, gold to gem ratio. I'm not sure if it's a gem, but, like, it, it's not yeah, a currency. Yeah. Like, if you would automate that process and analyze how much build wood there is in, in the economy and, like... Adjust the ratio for that, and that's me kind of understanding the mathematical background of that. But like that would kind of prevent SOE setting a price, infecting like your 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 player economy in a way where you wouldn't really want to have that, I guess. But I guess I, I'm not sure if that's really gonna be an issue, though. You're right. We'll have to see. Uh, it might not be too much of an issue because you can only buy them for station cash, right? So you can't give, oh, look, Sony, I have this in-game gold and I can buy it from you as a merchant. They're not saying that. They're just saying that if you have station cash, you can buy resources. Otherwise, if it's in-game money, you have to buy from a player. Is that how it's going down? Or has that not really been specified? So it, it specifically says it, in buying resources that you can also trade with other players for resources. And, of course, you can gather them yourself. The station cash is option is just a shortcut. They haven't okay. outright said that you can't buy it for gold in game or whatever the, the monetary you know thing is in game. But they said it's station cash that you would be purchasing the resources. Yeah, but... 
Chad's point is that uh, them tying a station cash price to it makes players adjust their gold prices to the station cash prices, which is Chad's main fear. If well, sure, though, because like that. They, they have a um, Pinapod brought up a great point, and it's exactly what Angie's talking about. If it is station cash only, my worry is that, hey, I have in-game gold and I can buy it from a merchant, because that undermines the player community right away. Um, station cash is a little different, because look at the chrono, or what, what Plex, Plex, what Tana was talking about. Right. You know, you pay station cash, and then the players can sell from there, and it's a way to get, you know, money in and out of the economy. Um, so we'll just have to see. We have a lot more to talk about, but um, that's one thing I'm a little worried about. What, um, we, do we have time to cover one more before we take a break? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we started late, so we have about 14 minutes still, I think. Mm hmm Yeah, 14 minutes. Um, but, so, what is one thing that you see yourself, like, oh, if, when, do, do you see yourself buying the cosmetic items? Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, unless I can unlock a gnome, I'm not gonna spend item on cosmetics. I'm sorry. They can make a. Uh, they can make a little uh, potion for you there, Carl. Little appearance. <laughs> that makes you know, it they smaller. Could do it. They can do it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's gonna be no, have to be one I, of the I things. No, I want proper gnomes. Big hats, like nice and bulky, chest hair, big feet, hair. Why would you Lots buy hair? Energy? Kai. Say again, because I didn't. Direct sorry, me. sorry. You said yes, and I said yes. I wanted to know why, why you would buy them. Why would I? Because I'm a girl and I like pretty things. <laughs> um, be, because honestly, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Sony is the game company that does armor right, and I have found a few armor sets that I don't like, but it's not. Ew, that's ugly armor. It's just it's not my type of armor. It's not my, I don't know, um, but I really like the armor sets that they've put out that you can buy, like, in Vanguard. They've got some really pretty armor sets, and then in EverQuest 2, they've got some really pretty armor sets. And, and yes, they're cosmetic, but I really, really, really like the way that they look, and I love the way that Landmark looks. I can only imagine what the armor in this game is going to look like. So, yes, I, I will absolutely be buying it if that means real money from my pocket into station cash to buy a piece of armor or a, a, a match set of armor just to tie the look together hell yes i'll buy it on the same exact way appearance you know is something that doesn't in impact gameplay in any way shape or form really unless it's like a pvp game where you sort of gotta see somebody and, and like recognize their armor but i absolutely love buying appearance items i bought them in the past i buy camos and you know cool helmets and planet side 2 all the time um Honestly, that's one of my most preferred ways to monetize a free-to-play game is appearance items because it has, as I, far as I can see, no negative impact, and I just I buy a lot of it. See, and the thing I'm most interested about spending money on are the um, the music, the music things in like Phase Five that they were talking about that you can add to your claim. Yes. Because when I because when I build something, I want to build it with a lot of customization, and if I can add like the music quality to that that particular location to add to that feel or the effect that I'm trying to go for, I'm going to do it. Um, so that's been one of the things I can see myself spending money on. Anybody else? The, that is one yeah, of the coolest features. There's, there's only one thing I would spend serious money on. And uh, I, I've, said th I've said this a number of times, but I still have huge concerns with actual space. Like, we've, we've did a little trek with our friends, and like some of the builds my friends have planned and I have planned, we would actually need like <laughs> I, I I would need upwards to thirty plots to build my town that I would want to build. Right. Now I That's have no all. issue dumping a lot of money on that. I have no issue with that whatsoever. Uh, but like some hard caps were already mentioned, so like that's still my one concern and that's the only thing I would really want to spend money on because like the 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 worst feeling in the world is building something having to template it and starting new like I want to build in the same style I want to expand on that and I want a city to grow essentially yeah or if I want to build a giant volcano with like which goes all around has a giant city inside I I I, I really miss that from like say Are you building Minecraft Darwin I, there? I, Sorry, go. What are you, are you building Garwin? Nah. Or, nah. Uh, we'll see. But like that's 
that's my only concern and i and i kind of hope that like if you have the money which i don't but we'll solve that later i guess there is a way to to to, to do that anyway because yeah, like I, instances I, I, that you can yeah, buy yeah and that was I, I was gonna bring it up too because it's the same thought i have i don't know where that point is but they've mentioned there's going to be upkeep on your claim there's going to be uh you know an escalating upkeep the more claims that you have at some point in time i'm going to be like I don't want to grind and get in-game gold to upkeep on, or whatever resource I have to, to get to upkeep on my claims. I'd rather just spend the station cash so that I know, hey, these are my claims and they're set and they're done. Yeah, At, yeah you'll be able to pay the station cash, I'm sure. Upkeep's coming next week, isn't it? I, uh, I hope so, because that will clean up a lot of claims of people who played for like two days and then went inactive. Um, do want to point out... Uh, that it was actually mentioned that upkeep will be one of the shortcuts in phase three, most likely. But yeah, that's I'm... upkeep's the week of the nineteenth. We'll see you next week. That's sweet. And permissions are coming in as well, that, which will that be kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, what else is there to talk about? Ah, uh, let's see. The player studio. I, I we keep talking about that. Are, are any of us going to try and and actually use any of the software for the player studio, or are we just all going to leave it inside the game, inside the landmark engine to build? Um, I don't know. It's difficult. I mean, have you guys used any like three D program or three D modeling programs like I Blender have, or anything like that? I have decent experience with three D Max, Maya, and. Uh... ZBrush, uh, yeah. so I'm kind of tempted to like do stuff. At the same time, if I see like how much I'm building a landmark at the moment, I I kind of get to a situation where I either spend 20 hours in in like a, mo a, a modeling application to maybe make some money off a chair, or maybe a little bit more ambitious, but whatever, or just build a landmark and, and enjoy myself and like. That's why I game, and I'm not really in it for profit. So I, I, I'm not sure. Like, the, 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 the only thing where I would be like, okay, let's let's open up a 3D modeling tool and do something with it is if I build something very specific and I need something very specific. But like, yeah, it's Player Studio, so it needs to go to the approval process, which is kind of a risk. So like, doing your entire build to not get the object in game is kind of risky. So I'm kind of still on the fence about that, to be honest. Well, I, I know that that Trina was talking about how difficult it was to make gears, right? For your for your no mission, your no mission. Yeah, yeah. Well, imagine yeah. be able to make those gears in a three D modeling program and, and sell it. You know, hey, like, look, I'm the Gnomish overlord. I well, yeah. I I've, I've used three D AutoCAD. Oh, sure. I, mean, I mean, it yeah. was it was twenty years ago, but I know the program enough that that gears are really simple to do in a three D modeling, and if those sell well, I mean, and I I'm with Cowboy. I do not want to turn this into a second job. I want to, to play games to have fun. But at the same time, if I make something and there's a demand for it, I'm not going to hold myself back from putting it up on the player studio. I, I also think it's worth pointing out that uh, these tools, like, they're not super hard, sure. Uh, it takes a lot of time and effort to get used to. But as, as just a person who's, like, decently technically skilled or, like, has has a lot of patience. He he or she can easily get into uh, modeling these things. Like if 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 you look at, for example, like the the um, wow, okay, shop on uh, for example Dota two. A, a lot of the artists on there started out as just fans trying and messing around with with uh, with sales like that. So that's like I, I think a really interesting thing. I agree. Um, I also want to note that I do not believe, from what I've heard with Planetside 2 Player Studio, that you have to make a perfect model and send it to them. Um, sometimes they'll even take sketches for certain items, and then they'll work on modeling it with you. Um, so, in the past, I don't know what they're going to do for Landmark, but in the past, you don't necessarily have to make that perfect gear model and send it to them in like a Maya format if you have something that's substantially, you know, on the same level. So, hey, look, I have this amazing artist rendering of, of what a gear should look like and what I want to use, and maybe, in, you know, 
uh, Photoshop you bring up and you make the texture for it and send that to them. Then they'll combine that on a 3D model and then put it up on the shop. So there's possibilities for people who are not experts in their in their field to uh, to make some money and get exposure and experience on the way. I'll try it out. I don't know how well it's going to work, but I'll try it out. All right. Um, so any any final thoughts? Um, we have about five minutes left of the show uh, before we take a break and come back for the after hour segment. Uh, any final thoughts? Anybody? Gnomes. Gnomes. Give, Give me, gnomes. me gnomes. Dark elves. I want All dark right. elves. Well, don't go anywhere, guys. Oh, uh, I actually no, I have one. I we had a couple minutes before we take a break. How, how about this? Do, race blocking the, those do you th uh, they probably won't do that because that's like a content block right because that's one of the things i wanted to point out nah, i to mention that they will like, not there's no content behind a paywall right or is there do you think you mean i'd have to pay for gnomes i don't think like if if that was their plan it would already be mentioned in this plan right right well, so you, you cannot claim full transparency and then drop something down right. the <laughs> no no like, and, right. you just Tesso. cannot do that Tesso i'm sorry is selling you know what? In their collector's if editions if Sony, call, not that Sony would ever call me, because seriously, but like if somebody from Sony, from SOE, called me like tomorrow morning and said, hey, Kyleste, we hear you really want Dark Elves. If you give us 20 bucks right now, we'll let you have one. I'd be like, hell yes, take my money. <laughs> so I don't really, I don't know. At this what, point, uh, I kind of don't care. What, I, that was a poorly... <laughs> is a poorly way to get to my point. My point was for the other people that are watching um, or are just hearing about, you know, Landmark for the first time, like my, my friend R Dog in channel here, um, there is no content. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There's no Sorry. content that we've seen that's behind a paywall. It, it, do, do we all, all of us agree on that? That right now, the, the way they have their, their cash shop set up, there's nothing that's behind a paywall. Like yes. you have to pay for this content. Yes. Music. And I, well, is that really... Uh... Ah, come on. It depends what's being sold. I mean, there could <laughs> be some flipping amazing music that you don't get to hear unless you buy it. That's a paywall. Is it not a so, paywall? So, uh, how about iTunes, though? Okay, we should really leave this for the after All right, all right. Like, <laughs> wow, all right. Um, Other gonna... than that, there's nothing I can think of. Everything seems to be accessible through within the game, and that's good. Other than outfits, I mean, specific outfits are behind a paywall, but, like... Like I said, that's not a matter at all. Well, all right, we're going to take a quick five-minute break, guys, and we'll be right back with a lot more. We'll dive into, apparently, Spotify versus iTunes and a couple other things, probably. So stick <laughs> with us. It's going to be interesting. No. Um, yeah, right? And we'll see you guys in a bit. Uh, yeah. Camping out? I, I will. I'll camp us out today. Um, I'm going to – during our intermission, we, we always play a video, and um, – the video that I'm going to play is going to be a recap of the Harvest um, Fools developer diary. Um, as you may have heard us bab, you know, babble about, um, it was on our agenda as something to talk about, um, but due to time constraints, we jumped over it to talk about like the real issues. Uh, so enjoy the um, 